One of the coolest things about Cyberpunk 2077 is your actions have real consequences. Depending on what you say, who you help or don't, can lead to different endings for V, Johnny and Night City's many citizens you meet along the way. Here are the five worst decisions you can make that have a disturbing consequences. Let's take a look. Our first decision is from the recent Phantom Liberty DLC during the side mission No Easy Way Out. After you've completed the initial Phantom Liberty quest with Myers and been in Dogtown for a short while, you'll get a message from Coach Fred asking you to check on one of his boxing students, Aaron. He's in trouble with the animals and you can help him escape gang life as a fall guy for the animals or keeping him on the books to earn yourself some credits. Basically, Aaron has a chip in him that forces him to lose fights and he wants you to remove it and you can head to the Ripper dock in order to get it taken out. However, once there, and you will show up, who is the animal's gang leader in Dogtown. Here is where the choices happen. First, Angie will offer to cut you in on the bet winnings if you agree to leave and let Aaron take the fall. After agreeing, a few days later, Angie will ask to meet you at a boxing ring and will give you 22,000 credits, concluding the quest. Coach Fred will reach out saying it's a shame you couldn't help Aaron, but nothing else will happen. Option two is if you have killed Sasquatch, the leader of the animals, before you meet Angie. You can threaten her instead and she will back off and you can then give the following options to Aaron. You can tell him to either throw the fight and then a few days later he will reach out saying that he's still part of the animals but he has started coaching little kids in Dogtown to be boxers as well. If you tell him to do the fight properly he'll send you a message saying he lost but that he's left for Costa Rica where he's doing street fights and making a go of being a professional fighter and you'll be rewarded 5,000 credits for either of these. However, a slightly more disturbing option is option number three, and that's to refuse Angie's deal inside of the hideout, and you'll have to kill her and her two goons. Now, this is a good option if you want her unique iconic power pistol Cheetah, but a few days after leaving the hideout, Aaron will ask you to meet him at a bar in Dogtown, but when you arrive, you'll find his dead body out back by the trash bins, having been killed by the animals, either by refusing to help them any longer, or simply as revenge for you killing Angie. Come on, V, take heart. Guy tried to do the right thing for once in his life. You don't feel a thing. Heard this song before, V. Know the lyrics by heart. One of the most difficult decisions in Cyberpunk is regarding Jefferson Perales. The upcoming mayoral candidate discovers that he and his wife have been victims of a powerful and secret organization that alters their minds and watches their every move. Initially, you're called to investigate what seems to be a break-in, but the case quickly turns weird as you start to uncover a mysterious conspiracy with Jefferson and Elizabeth trapped at the center. After investigating, you find eventually that the Perales family is not paranoid. They are in fact being watched but they are having their minds altered as their memories are being wiped and new ones being implanted without their awareness. Talking to Elizabeth Perales, she will later admit that she knows what's being happening to her and she's been keeping it quiet after receiving threatening phone calls. They threaten you, try to blackmail you. They said I was walking on thin ice. That if we kept stirring up trouble, Jeff could have an accident. The disturbing part comes though when you finally talk to Jefferson. You can choose to not tell him what happens, but in the end he will remain a puppet and despite looking pretty happy in the end, he will have no free will and be unaware of the things that are still happening to him. Hey V, Jefferson Peral is here, you know, mayor of Night City. I'm calling about our recent program to tackle homelessness. What would you say about being the head of my security detail, huh? As you know, the number of people I can trust are few and far between. Next week, we're going to be raising the city's taxes, so things might get a little hairy. Come by, we'll hammer out a good deal for you. I'm no any pincher when it comes to safety. All right, well, we'll be in touch, V. But if you choose to tell him the truth, he becomes more and more paranoid, even turning on his wife. So ultimately, there's no happy ending for Jefferson. Hey, it's Perales. V, you're going to want to hear this. But first, we need to go somewhere no one's listening. Okay, so my wife, Elizabeth, she's in on the whole thing. She, she keeps saying I should look after myself. Tells me to take these pills. Says they're vitamins. Got them analyzed at a lab. And they look okay. But, but how am I supposed to know if somebody didn't falsify the results? Well, 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 when you got a sec, call me, okay? 
Oh yeah, and don't forget to delete this message. During your time in Dogtown, V will be called out by a recruit named Paco Torres, who is currently drinking his problems away alongside his companion Babs. After introducing Paco, we'll share the story of an op led by Kurt Hansen that went wrong. At one point, Paco will offer to take V on a deep dive using drugs to make Paco's story more vivid, and you can inhale those and Paco will tell his story. Paco reveals that he was part of a convoy that was carrying generators, and Paco stole them before selling them for cash. And now Paco and Babs are asking V for advice on what to do next, because their lives are now in danger, and there are several options for you to do. If V tells them to leave Dogtown, Babs will offer to stay behind to reduce suspicion. After adding Paco and Bab to the contact list, V must follow Paco to his car, where V can ask Paco to get in the trunk, drive the car to the marked location by the Grand Imperial Mall, and then you can let Paco out. The second option is to offer to call a friend for a favour to help smuggle Paco and Bab out of Dogtown, either River, Pan Am or Rogue. And either of these options will result in you meeting Paco later on and you can get a unique weapon out of it. The most disturbing option though is choice 3, if you tell them to frame Yuri. Paco and Babs will agree to meet you under the underpass, next to the needle the following day, but when you get there, you are instead met by Yuri, who then opens fire on you. After you defeat him, you can find a message shard between him and Hansen that tells Yuri to hang Paco's body under the needle. If you go to the designated point, you can then find Paco's body hanging from the ceiling and you are unable to save him. A message from Babs will reveal that she called in a favour and managed to escape Dogtown and fly to Kenya, but Paco wasn't so lucky. Paco, it's gotta be... Fuck me. Leaves the chick. If Hansen suspected her, she'd be swinging up there too. Barry? Am I remembering that right? Who is it? V, your neighbor from upstairs. Remember me? Talked about Prem rides. One of V's neighbors in H10 Mega Building is Barry Lewis. This NCPD officer has taken a break from fighting crime to resolve his issues. Barry has had a tough year thanks to an increase in crime and is one of the few good souls in Night City, but he finds life tough. Players can talk to Barry and try to console him and his grief. And one of the ways to do this is for players to find Andrew's memorial at the Columbarium, and you can also warn Petrova and Mendez of Barry's deteriorating mental health. However, if you decide to stop paying attention to Barry's problems, or you simply ignore this side quest altogether, Barry will eventually take his own life inside of his apartment. Barry! Barry, you fucking asshole! I'm sorry, okay? Mendez, it's too late. He can't hear you. Your genes were fine, Barry. You were the strongest son of a bitch I knew. I'm so, I'm so sorry, Barry. I, I'm sorry. Phantom Liberty has multiple endings, but the worst one you can make is to side with Reed and hand Songbird over to him and President Myers. During the sequence where Songbird is extracting the Neural Matrix and Firestarter, you can choose the option to help Reed capture Songbird or help Somi escape. While it may seem like the better option to help Songbird, it's actually a more disturbing option, and choosing to help Reed is considered a better outcome. Playing through the Reed mission, you eventually make your way to the Sinusure facility where Songbird and Blackwall will try to stop you and it's definitely one of the more scary parts of Cyberpunk. After all this, you'll eventually make your way to one of the game's hardest but ultimately best decisions to kill Songbird. But if you don't, this will lead to more disturbing outcomes. Either she will have a torturous end if you hand her over to the FIA under President Myers. Tell me about Somi. How's she doing? The changes in her nervous system. Entropic breakdown. They were too far gone. The Matrix didn't take. It's now in storage, being kept for you. We had to resort to alternate means, but Somi will live. I believe she might even return to active now, duty. And if you decide to side with Songbird, this will lead you to her being sent into space, and while she will not be a prisoner, she will still be trapped in her own mind as the Blackwall takes full control of her. So the best decision is to simply kill Songbird, which in itself is disturbing, and there is no real happy ending for her, or V for that matter, at the end of Phantom Liberty. Thanks to everyone who watched this far, like and subscribe for more cyberpunk videos, and I will see you all in the next one.
Bye. She made it. Pray that's what counts. If you're watching this, you know how our story ended. I'm a smidge jealous, I'll admit. I'm scared, V. But I need to trust you, and I do. And if you're watching this, I was right too. So, I thank you.